So welcome everybody. Today, our topic is leveraging generative AI to drive nonprofit innovation. I'm so glad you're here and somebody's already turned on the closed caption. So if you need the closed caption, just tap on the CC button at the bottom of your screen. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here. This is being recorded and we're going to send the slides and the video replay by tomorrow. So look for that in your inbox. And I would love if you would fill out the survey. There's going to be a survey that's going to pop up on your screen as soon as you close the Zoom window. We would love your feedback on what you would want more from TechSoup and from AWS. So I'm going to turn it over to Mike Young. He is the Business Development Program Manager at Amazon Web Services. Mike, I am so glad you, Angela, and Carl are here. Over to you. Great. Thanks so much. Um, hi, everyone. I am um, I'm zooming in from North Carolina. Uh, thank you for joining today's AWS and uh, TechSoup Ask the Experts webinar. Um, we're so glad that you all could be here. Uh, today, we're going to be discussing the hottest topic in tech, um, generative AI. Uh, so our experts are going to be digging into what Gen AI is and how you um, and your organizations can utilize it to really bring value to your organizations through Amazon Web Services. Um, again, my name is Mike. I'm with the Nonprofits Programs team here at AWS. Um, our goal as a programs team, we're, we're, we're really here just to bring programs to life that are going to benefit uh, nonprofits like yours. Uh, the goal of this Ask the Experts series is really to provide some really kind of practical guidance. So our technical experts, uh, Carl and Angela, they're going to take a two-pronged approach, really. So we're going to kick off with kind of more of an academic sort of backbone overview of, of what Gen AI is. Uh, and then Angela is going to take us through uh, a, a kind of like live sort of how-to demo um, and get you some real world examples of how you can sort of bring these technologies into your own uh, organizations using Amazon Web Services. Um, so just a note, Amazon Web Services, AWS, we were founded over 15 years ago. Uh, some of our earliest AWS customers, they were nonprofits, organizations like the Red Cross, uh, PBS, uh, these organizations, they're still using AWS to power their innovations today. Uh, so in just a minute, we're going to kick off with Carl and Angela, both of whom are superstar AWS solutions architects. So, so, so glad to have them there. Uh, but first, just wanted to get a sense as to who is actually in the room today. So I know you chatted in earlier about how you're using Gen AI. Uh, but, um, you know, I'm going to ask for your engagement here for just a second. So if I could get a quick poll in the room of, um, you know, if you could put a one in the chat, uh, if you have ever received AWS credits through TechSoup before, if you could just put a one in the chat, uh, just so we can get a sense as to uh, who is here. Thanks, Carlton. I see that. Oh, thanks, John. Okay. Oh, zero. <laughs> Okay, um, awesome. And now if you could actually put a two in the chat, if you're completely new to AWS itself. Oh, that's great. Okay, well, certainly welcome, welcome. Um, so glad to see that actually, you know, it looks like we have attendees from both camps, which is great to see, you know, we, we love chatting with old friends as well as making new friends too. So welcome everybody. Uh, for those who are newer to credits, um, AWS does work directly with TechSoup. Uh, we provide nonprofit organizations just like yours with funding to help support AWS cloud usage. So these credits can actually be used to offset your cloud technology costs. Uh, we have a tiered program through TechSoup where nonprofits can have access to $1,000, $2,000, or up to $5,000 annually in AWS credits, um, just kind of depending on your organization's annual operating budget. So you can definitely learn more about that uh, through the TechSoup website, kind of choosing Amazon Web Services as a provider there. Uh, also, please keep in mind that this webinar itself, this is an opportunity. It's an interactive thing, so feel free to ask questions as they come up. Um, if you have to type questions in, uh, we'll do our best to get to them either, either through uh, throughout the webinar or uh, during the Q&A section at the end. Um, all right, well, so that's enough for me. Uh, I'm going to pass it on to the good stuff, so I will go ahead and pass this on to Carl. Carl, please take it away. Thanks. Thank you, Mike. All right. First of all, I think just put in one that everybody can see my screen. Are we all good here? Yeah, just let Looks me know good. in the chat that. Okay, looks good. Thank you. Well, good day, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with all of you here today. As mentioned, my name is Carl Camp, and I'm a solutions architect with our dedicated nonprofits team here at AWS. And I'm also joined by my colleague, 
Angela Tsai, and both of us are really excited to be sharing with you our knowledge on using generative AI on the AWS cloud, and also sharing a couple of use cases of how our nonprofits are using them, and also Angela will be actually demoing some of those technologies for you. Now, if you have any questions during the presentation, we do have a Q&A feature as part of the Zoom experience, so feel free to write those up in the chat. And we'll try to address those accordingly as we can. I'll also try to leave some time at the end of the presentation so that we can address any other questions that you may have. So first, what we're going to do in this presentation is we're just going to cover at a high level what generative AI is. I'm happy to see that a lot of you have played around with ChatGPT, right, and some of the other models. But I also want to explore maybe for those who are new with AI or generative AI are not exactly sure what is it, how it came about to be. Just want to give a brief explanation of how it works, right, at a very high level, some of its benefits and the common use cases. And then we'll also share some of the services that AWS provides that can support generative AI. And then we'll also have the accommodating demos. And then finally, we'll share with you some resources on how you can get started on using AWS's generative AI um, in, and how to launch an AWS account and start using those today. So with that, we'll just start with the very common question, what is generative AI or generative, generative artificial intelligence? So generative AI is a type of AI that can create new content and ideas, including conversations, stories, images, videos, and music in a way that appears very close to human-like. So it's pow powered by large models that are pre-trained on vast amounts of data, which are commonly referred to as foundation models. Now, for those of you who might be new to this, I just really wanna pause, right? Hold up exactly what is a foundation model and why is it important when we talk about generative AI? So let's just start at a very high level, right? With the history of just tr traditional machine learning models. To accomplish machine learning, you need data, right? And that data needs to be labeled, needs to be used to then train a model for a specific task. And for example, let's take a task of, let's say prompts about the weather. What we would do then is we would grab this labeled data and we train that data to predict the weather using specific parameters that we're training on. And let's say those parameters can be location, time, or some, maybe some historical data to then get a fairly accurate idea or prediction of what we can expect from the weather in our specific time and location. Now, what happens then if you've done this type of training for billions of parameters of labeled data, data over the course of several years to accomplish many different types of tasks. Well, that's how you get really a foundation model, right? So with a foundation model, instead of now gathering all this labeled data for each model and then training it on multiple models, customers can just use the same pre-trained foundation model to adapt to various tasks. And so, so foundation models can also then be customized to perform domain-specific functions that are differentiating to an organization, really only just using a small fraction of the data and compute required to train a model from scratch. And so in this way, right, generative AI can grab different types of input and through the adaptive nature of these foundation models, generate a specified output, which can look like new content, such as essays, solutions to problems, or realistic pictures, audio, or videos. Now it can do this across all different types of inputs. But the most common ones that we see and kind of what I've seen that you've put in the chat, right, is those can be text to text, text to embeddings, or perhaps multimodal such as text to image. Now, due to the billions of parameters that these foundation models have been trained on, they're able to generate new content by really predicting what the likely next output should be based on what it has seen and learned over the course of several years of training. So. The point is, this really isn't new magic, right? It's the same machine learning that has naturally grown to be able to do more through the years of training and appear more human-like. And so with this new development, we can see it being used for several different use cases across all different segments. 
such as text generation, right? Productivity, virtual chat assistance is a very common one that I see. Um, text summarization, image classification, search code, image, music, and video generation. Again, all of this is to say is that really the best way to understand and look at generative AI is that really it's an efficiency enhancement tool, being able to generate content significantly faster to reduce the time from you have an idea of your head, so an ideation, to actually generating the content itself. Now, I know you've mentioned that you're using um, Chat GPT, right? And I know some of you have put some of the use cases, but I'd love for those of you, right, who maybe just mentioned, hey, I'm using Chat GPT, right? I'd actually like for you to maybe put in, are you using generative AI in your organization somehow? And if you're not using it in your organization, how are you using it personally? So if you can maybe take a moment to type those up in the chat so that we can understand exactly how you're using generative AI, like what are the use cases you're actually solving in your organization? That would be great. Okay, research, reviewing grant submissions, content improvement, great social media, storyline web pages. Oh, this is awesome. Creating formulas, blog posts. Hey, I like that. Grants, grant writing. Okay, I see grant writing a lot. Okay. <laughs> All right, Carlos, I see what you're doing. <laughs> Cheating in school. <laughs> Policies. All right. Okay. Let's see. Okay, not yet using with the organization. Gotcha. Okay. Well, it sounds like a lot of people are using it for grants, which is great. Um, using it for some blog posts, some essay generations, which is awesome. Some of you are very small, are not using it for anything at the moment. So hopefully this will give you some ideas and hopefully the demos will give you some ideas on how you can use it in your organization. Okay, so now that we've discussed generative AI just at a very high level, I wanna go into what are the services or generative AI services that are available on AWS. And that way we're gonna explore the different use cases or different capabilities that generative AI can be used for your organization. Now at AWS, we divide our generative AI suite of services across three layers of varying complexity and effort needed to go from input to generative output. So at the top layer, the next question is Elizabeth, right? We have our applications that leverage what would be called large language models and other foundation models. Now, just very quickly, what's the difference between the two? The foundation models are more um, general purpose, right? Um, large language models are more deeper into actually like, hey, we're just dealing with language and they just know language very well. And they, like when you're dealing with essays or chat, or like if actually you're chatting, right? So large language models, that's when those would be used for specific um, interactive type of text to text, right? Conversational type of experiences. So this top layer, right? Are applications that are ready to go and can start taking inputs without the need for it choosing a model or extensive training on the data. So usually this would be models that are, they'll just grab the data, they already have a model chosen for them and they're ready to start generating output. Now the next layer are tools to build with LLMs, right? So large language models and other foundation models. So this will require bringing in your data, choosing your actual model and then training the model to start generating more catered responses based off of your use cases. And then finally, the lowest level is the infrastructure for foundation model training and inference, which involves pretty much, right, building up on top of AWS infrastructure to train everything from scratch. So at AWS, our generative AI services fall fairly neatly into these categories. And in this presentation, we're going to be taking a look at the first two layers, right? Those that are the quickest to get started with using generative AI to enhance the productivity of your organization. And the first service I'm going to start with is actually taking a look at our Amazon Q suite of services. Now, Amazon Q is a new type of generative AI powered assistant designed to work for you at work. So if you're getting started with AWS, I know a lot of you are new, 
right? With Q, if you logged into an AWS account, Q would like to get started very, very quickly on answering questions through natural language interactions. So you can easily chat, generate content, and then take actions all informed by an understanding of your systems, data repositories, and operations. So for example, right? Um, let's say you were starting with like, hey, I want to launch a bucket or a website. What, what would that look like, right? So how would I launch a website on AWS? So you could type that up in Amazon Q. Amazon Q would take a look and it would maybe take a look at um, some of the documentation that we provide, some workshops, some best practices, right? So you can actually generate that for you and provide you step-by-step -step guidance in order to implement, implement a website on Amazon Web Services. Now, of course, we know how important security and privacy are to an organization. And so Amazon Q also understands and respects the different types of policies, roles, and permissions. So if a user does not have access to a service or a particular aspect of Amazon Web Services through, through general permissions, it will also not have that access to that through Amazon Q. And so Amazon Q is really designed to meet enterprise customers' stringent requirements from day one. And just to let you know, we never use business customers' content or data to train Amazon Q for the, for the underlying models that it supports. And it is now integrated in multiple types of our most popular services, including our, and the one I want to share with you a little bit, our Amazon BI tool, my right, business intelligence tool called QuickSight. So I wanted to show you just very quickly, like, what does generative AI, what can generative AI, generative AI do when you're implementing that, let's say, in just trying to visualize content? So here, right, I have a very quick demo um, showing you how here we're just writing a natural language prompt for a line data graph. And we want to turn that into a bar chart data. So with Q, right, our generative AI service, it can understand the natural language prompt and generate the desired output accordingly. Or another feature of QuickSight Q is that it can build executive stories based off of data that you've connected to Amazon Q and it can provide summaries of that data and the data charts to help gain insights into your organizational metrics quicker so that you can start taking action sooner to enhance the work of your mission in the communities that you serve. So as you see here, right, it just typed in generate an executive story based off of my data. It grabs some charts, it puts some things together to understand and put together this data into a cohesive story. Now, there are two types of Amazon Q offerings. So first, and this is the one that I mostly talked about, we have our Amazon Q developer. Amazon Q developer serves as your expert assistant for building on AWS, right? So it grabs year, 17 years of worth of AWS knowledge so it can transform the way you build, optimize, and operate applications and workloads on Amazon Web Services. And so we've put Amazon Q where you work, ready to assist you in the management console, which I I'm sure Angela will be able to actually show that a little bit in her demo and also our documentation. It can also be integrated with Slack to enhance productivity when working with colleagues on the platform. And it also helps you with step-by-step -step process with working with AWS. So it can help with fixing bugs, um, researching documentation, picking the right um, instances. So that would be our EC2 compute, troubleshooting any networking issues that you may have or, up or upgrading application runtime versions so you can build better and faster. You can also chat with Amazon Q to explore new AWS capabilities. And it's also been used and trained on our well-architected patterns so that you can see best practices and solution implementations. And then finally, the second version of Amazon Q for Business um, is Amazon Q for Business. So Amazon Q for Business delivers quick, accurate, and relevant answers to your business questions securely and privately. So what it can do is that it can quickly connect to your business data, information, and other systems and enable employees to have more tailored conversations and solve problems that take actions that are relevant to your particular business. 
So it can provide responses with references and citations for easy fact checking. So if you have like an internal wiki, right, you connect to that wiki and then Amazon, that way you can add generative AI capabilities um, into your organization quicker. Amazon Q also offers 40 plus built-in connectors to popular enterprise applications and document repositories such as our own Amazon S3 or Salesforce, Google Drive, Microsoft 365, ServiceNow, Gmail, Slack, Atlassian, and Zendesk to bring actionable insights to your employees in one unified experience. And then also finally, it enables administrators to easily apply guardrails to customize and control responses. So in other words, right, Amazon Q provides administrative controls. So like the ability to block entire topics or filter both questions and finalize answers using keywords that help ensure it responds in a way that is consistent with your organization's guidelines. And in fact, Amazon Q is already being used by our nonprofit customers. One of those customers, as seen here, is Bonterra. So Bonterra is a technology for the greatest good, helping nonprofits, charitable foundations, and socially responsible companies raise more, give more, and get more for their missions. And so with leading solutions across fundraising and engagement, strategic philanthropy, and impact management, what they're trying to do is they're innovating with a higher purpose to increase giving up to 3% of US GDP by 2033. And what they mentioned at Batera, what they do, is that they're able to drive innovation and operational excellence across multiple teams using Amazon Q by integrating it with Jira to generate performance insights and recommendations, and also to analyze AWS issues to generate timely recommendations. And so these generative AI integrations not only enhance their operational efficiency, but also drive continuous learning, skill development, and increasing employee productivity within their teams. So this is something that I wanted to have Angela demo for you. So Angela, if you're ready to demo, I can pass that over to you. Let me see if I can. Right. Thank you, Carl, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is Angela. I'm also a solutions architect at AWS working with nonprofit customers. I saw in the chat there were some really good questions about how do we connect the data sources? How does it actually work? So that's what I'm going to show you in this next part. So here I am at uh, the login page. If your organization already uses AWS, you might be familiar with this login page that you will get when you set up a single sign-on to AWS from um, your organization to access um, your multiple accounts. And Q can integrate with the screen by having the application already ready to go at the sign-in page here. So we're going to go to one of the demo apps I built called AWS Vent. So coming into AWS Event, giving a second to load, here you're greeted by a custom title screen that you can adjust to your organization with subtitles and a prompt to tell your user what this may be about, what type of questions they may ask. On the left-hand side, you'll see chat history. So users, when they log in, they are able to uh, resume the conversation that they were having with the chatbot prior. So this chatbot I built, I have um, equipped it with knowledge around AWS events. So for example, if I say, um, what are the next two events coming up near me in Denver? It's going to give me a response back based on my question and notice how it says, hey, there's a generative AI, it gives me the date, and then it gives me the location. I know this date is a little bit in the past because um, I built this a couple of days ago, so bear with me there. Um, and then here's the second event where it might be near me and I might be interested. So it looks like the next closest event to me is Seattle. One thing I want to point out is if you notice, each of these information has a little number asterisk next to it. So what that is, it's, it's the source. So the way I built this chatbot is I gave it a website link 
And I say, hey, here's a link with all the AWS event information. Please go look and uh, it, equip yourself with this knowledge, right? And so it is referring back to the links to the documentations that I had originally provided with. So I know this is, you know, AWS event. You're probably not going to build a chatbot for AWS event, but what you can do is have a chatbot. Maybe you equipped it with events of your organization, right? If you are someone who organizes different fundraising events, different volunteering events, um, your internal workers can, internal employees um, can come in here and ask things about it. Another thing we can do is I heard a lot of generating blog posts, generating events, right? Description, things like that. So that is a common use case of it. So let's say um, I want to ask it, I am going to plan an event for nonprofit leaders. They are interested in um, improving their member and donor experience. Give me a title and event description that will be um, interesting to them. So it has knowledge about AWS events. So it's able to take a look at that and then generate something completely new, right? So here is the recommendation that it gave me. It gave me a title for an event that I can host and then give me some ideas. Um, about what I can do with this event. So we can explore how they can use cloud-based technology to improve it, boost fundraising efforts, accelerate mission outcome, um, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so let's say I say, this is great. I love it. It even tells me key topics to talk about scaling reduced costs because it understands that that is what nonprofits need. So I say, this is great. Now turn this into a social media post that I can share on LinkedIn. All right, so here um, it generate back a, a little briefer description of what I can potentially share on LinkedIn. Um, now let's say, you know, a couple of you mentioned marketing email. So what if I want to now generate a marketing email describing this event? The receiver is a um, nonprofit financial leaders. So let's see how it might change the way it talks if I'm telling it, hey, our target audience is somebody who is interested in finance. And in your use case, right, maybe it is targeting different audiences. If you serve um, different age groups, different ethnicity backgrounds, or different types of leaders that you're trying to reach out to. Uh, so here is the email that it generated. Um, and so it says we're going to do member experience, specifically brought up boost fundraising efforts and accelerate mission outcome. And um, again, we see it here mentioning, let's see, um, meet with AWS partners, you need needs and nonprofits and um, reduce costs up here. So this is just a quick example to show you how you can use Amazon Q and equip it with the knowledge of your organization to help boost the productivity of your internal team. So now let's step through how you can create your first application in Q. So I'm gonna come over here. Looks like I got locked out. All right, so here is the AWS console page for Amazon Q Business. On the left-hand side here, if I come to application, it will show me a list of the applications that I have. So I'm going to go to create application to take you through how easy it is to get started. So I'm gonna give it a name, call it my app demo. And here are some configurations about security and access, we're going to leave those as defaults for now. And coming into the next page, we are going to be asked, do you want to use a native retriever of 
documents and use what's built into Amazon Q, or do you already have existing retrievers with documentations behind it built? We're going to use native retriever to show you what data sources you can connect it with, with Amazon Q. And you have the option to select how powerful performance you want the compute to be. We're just going to do starter. All right, so here's the answer to the questions that a lot of people were asking um, just now. How do you connect the data sources? And the answer is there's multiple ways to do that. So these three are the most popular, starting from the right here, you can upload files. So if you have policies, documents, or previous um, stories, right? Uh, you've written about your nonprofit and you want Amazon Q to have those knowledge, you can directly upload them to uh, Amazon Q business. You can give it a web crawler. So let's take a peek here at the web crawler. So the web crawler can be as simple as you providing it a source URL, which is what I did with the AWS events page. Now here is where you would input the source URL and you may be wondering, well, my events page, sure, it has the different events that are coming up, but the details don't happen until you click on the event and then it goes to the next page. Well, Amazon Q has the capability, if we come down here, to select how deep you want it to sync. So you can sync everything, you can sync just the domain, or you can sync the domain and then one step further. And then coming down here, you have additional uh, configurations that you can do to say, hey, how many steps of links you wanted the crawler to click through, right? So do you want the events page plus one extra step? Or when it goes to the next page, we wanted to um, look for the links on that following page again, right? So a web crawler is an easy way to get started if you're trying to connect to um, data sources to something that is publicly available. Then the last one is Amazon Simple Storage Service. So if you are someone who's already using AWS services and you have documents and information stored in Amazon S3, you can connect it directly to where that files and those documents are stored. And coming down here, we have a whole lot more that you can connect to both internal and native to AWS, as well as third-party um, partners. All right. So coming in here to the next page, um, the last step you need to set up a business queue application is to just specify which users and which groups you want to have access to this application. And that's it. So I'm not going to actually create an application. I'm just going to show you real quick the backend of the AWS event queue bot that we just saw here. So once you create a um application, you can come in here, edit it, you can adjust the data sources, you can see the view. So here you see it was aborted because I had to crawl a little bit too many deaths and it was going on um, a little bit too long for a quick demo. So I aborted it to make sure I don't overwhelm it. But you can come in here and add additional data sources. You can um, adjust the customized web experience to set up the title, description, if you have multiple chatbots to help you keep track which one this is. All right, so I just showed you how you can create your first internal organization chatbot to help improve the productivity of your teams to help them get to information faster, or maybe it is generating new content, new grants, marketing email, new stories faster. So now I want to show you the other Amazon Q flavor that Carl mentioned, which is the developer. So the developer really, um, if you look to the right-hand side here, you'll see a very tiny hexagon symbol. That is the Amazon Q symbol, and that will be there no matter where in the console you go. So when I click on that symbol, oh, let me clear this out real quick, you will get a Amazon Q chatbot that pops up and say, hey, I am your AWS generative AI assistant. So let's ask a question. So let's say, um, how do I create an S3 bucket? So that's the storage service we have. So if you are trying to do something with AWS and you're not sure how to quite get there, it can help you with that and give you a step-by-step -step instruction. So it says, hey, to create a bucket, you can do the following steps. And here are some documentations that you might be interested in. Now, another thing that it can do is to help you understand what, um, errors mean, right? So here I have an example error code 
um, and I'm going to say, help me resolve this. All right, so it looks like it's going to, um, it looks like I have a connectivity issue with Q. Okay, let me just do a quick refresh. And actually, let me get out of this screen so it's not so busy to look at. All right, so let's try that again. What does this error mean? Right, okay, there we go. So it says, hey, the error is talking about these things. Here's three reasons why it can happen. Um, to troubleshoot issue, you can hear some things you can try and then here are some links, right? So this is helpful for your team who may have um, ITs or uh, financial people who need to access AWS console, but they're not super familiar with AWS console and how to get around. This would be a helpful tool to help them navigate. And this queue tool doesn't just exist only in the console. It also exists um, in the documentation. So I have a um, Amazon S3 documentation pulled up here and it will be in every documentation and it will be on the bottom right here. If you see the classic hexagon symbol, you click on it, the same chat bot will appear. Um, and notice how I actually retain the chat from the console over to here. And the last place that you can take advantage of Amazon Q um, is if you have a um, developing environment that you are using developer environment that you're using. So coming over here, let me um, switch my screen real quick. Okay. So here I have Visual Studio, which is the one that I use when I have some development um, coding to do. And on the left hand side here is Q. So you can install that as um, a helper tool in your uh, Visual Studio if that's what you're using. So I can ask a quick question um, and I can say, generate me a piece of Python code that alerts me when new objects are added to S3. All right. So it's going to think and then it now provides me with a sample code snippet. So what I can do then is easily click on this. Oh, it's still generating. It also explains how it works, right? And so I can copy this. And let's say I come over here and I really want to understand what this is doing. So then what I can do is I can highlight specific parts and say, okay, right click on it. And you might not be able to see the right click menu, but um, right click in Amazon Q, there's explain, fix, optimize. So let's say I say explain. So then it's gonna take that and it's going to explain to me what this snippet of code is doing. And so again, right, so Q developer helps your team who may not be familiar with AWS, may not be familiar with AWS as coding language, and this would be help them um, to accomplish what it is that they're trying to do faster and be more productive. All right, so, um, I think that's all I wanted to show you around Amazon Q and um, how it can boost the productivity of your team. Um, I will be back in a couple minutes to show you another demo, but for now, Carl, I'm going to um, hand it back to you. All right. Thank you, Angela. All right. Let's see. We should be back sharing our screen again. So let me go here. So hopefully you all enjoyed the demos. Hopefully that was helpful to understand a better picture of Q developer and Q for business. Now, the next thing I want to take a look at is take a look at our tools to build services, which falls specifically into our flagship generative AI service called Amazon Bedrock. So Amazon Bedrock is the easiest way to build and scale generative AI applications with large language models and other foundational models. And so customers in every industry are already using Bedrock 
to reinvent their user experience, products, and processes, and to bring AI into the heart of their business. But why use Amazon Bedrock? Now, Bedrock provides several key benefits when using generative AI. It's uh, with Bedrock's fully managed serverless experience. So when we mean serverless, it means you don't have to worry about the infrastructure and how it operates, right? And the maintenance of that infrastructure, right? Amazon Bedrock is fully serverless, which means that customers can get started quickly with a large range of foundation models. Um, you can also secure it very easily, right? And you can privately customize them with your own data, integrate and deploy those foundation models into your applications without managing any of that infrastructure. So Bedrock also ensures that any customized model remains private for each customer. And the service includes AWS proven security capabilities like what we have private link or role-based access control and our and encryption using our KMS encryption service. And so with Bedrock serverless experience, customers can find the right foundation model for the job, get started quickly, and privately customize foundation models with their own data. Now, with Bedrock, we offer models such as AI21 Labs, Amazon specific models, Anthropic, Cohere, Meta, Mistral AI, and Stability AI. Now, I know you're all using ChatGPT, right? But these different types of models are specifically catered, as you can see on the bottom here, to specific types of use cases. And all of those are available to you when you sign up to use Bedrock and you can start playing around with those models and figure out which use cases work best for you. Now, I don't want to spend the time going into all of these models and to their ability. But the main thing I want to communicate here is that just like anything on AWS, you are provided the widest range of offerings available from any cloud, cloud platform in generative AI so you can meet the unique needs of your organization in one cohesive platform. And so with these investments, our customers, customers have the flexibility to select the best models for their requirements, even as their needs grow and change. And so with Bedrock, customers have quickly taken advantage of different models to build all types of customer experiences. But as you mentioned, to build and train those models, right, we need data. And data needs to be secure and private. Is Amazon Bedrock a safe place to store your data and start using generative AI? And I want to assure you, right, with Amazon Bedrock, your data can be kept secure and private. No customer data is used to train or improve the original base model. And when you tune a model, we make a private version of the model, put it in a secure container, and it goes nowhere. Your data is never exposed to the public internet, it never leaves the AWS network, and is securely transferred through your VPC and can be encrypted in transit and at rest. And Bedrock enforces the same AWS access controls that you have with any other services. Bedrock supports a variety of regulatory standards such as HIPAA, right? It can also be used in compliance with GDPR if you're in Europe. All that is to say, your data can be safe on AWS and you can work with our team such as myself and Angela to help meet your data privacy needs so that you feel safe leveraging the best of generative AI for your organization. And in fact, Amazon Bedrock is already being used by our nonprofit customers, such as Alaya Care. Alaya Care is using generative AI to gather and then summarize what the organization affectionately calls note droppings. Notes made by different caregivers and nurses who go into a patient's home to provide care. Now, one nurse might make a note in one part of the Alaya Care platform about a particular patient complaining about, let's say, increased lower back pain. Then another nurse, right, may be visiting the same patient the following day, and it might make a note in a different part of the platform about that patient experiencing dizziness and shortness of breath. And so the large language models can read all of these notes that are left in different places, stitch them together, and provide the most important information, such as continued mentions of pain, and summarize it in a way that allows a clinician to spot trends and intervene earlier to avoid having the patient hospitalized. And so with that, I'm gonna transfer this back to Angela so that she can demo this. 
All right. Thanks, Carl. Um, okay, here we go. All right. So thank you, Carl, for sharing with us um, Amazon Bitrock and the next level down, right, in, in the stack that Carl was talking about this morning um, of how you can interact with generative AI on AWS. I showed you Amazon Q, which is a simple way to get started Bitrock. It's a way that you can interact through API and requires a little bit more coding to get started. So I'm actually going to take a pivot and instead of showing you bedrock, I'm going to show you something that we call party rock. And the reason why I decided to do a pivot is because I am observing in the chat that we have people say, hey, like this seems really complicated. We don't even, uh, we don't have a generative AI use case yet. What's the easiest way to get started? Um, and so I want to make sure that you are aware of this tool that we're providing um, to our customers and beyond and how you can start experimenting with generative AI and play with generative AI apps. So Party Rock is a application that we have made publicly available. You do not need to have an AWS account in order to access this. You can simply go to partyrock.aws and you will have access to this right here. And so Party Rock um, is like what you see on the homepage here a way for you to generate to generate an app that can help you based on a um, simple description of what you want the app to do. So instead of me telling you about it, let's try it out. So I'm going to say generate app. Um, I saw a lot of story building and marketing ex uh, examples earlier. So let's keep on that theme. So let's say um, generate and application that will help me write marketing emails. My emails have different audiences that I need to keep in mind for. Um, uh, let's just say no. Let's just say I just need to keep in mind the different audiences and um, help me write some marketing emails and outreach. Let's say in outreach emails. All right. And so I gave it the prompt. It's going to take that. Think about what fields I would need in order to have a successful application. Um, so let's give it a second here. All right. So this app, it just generated itself and it gave a little description. Hey, I created an app for you based on your prompt. It will help you write effective marketing and outreach email tailored to the different audiences. But first I need some context about your business and target audience, okay? So business description, um, let's say I am a nonprofit that provides um, support to those in need within my local community. Okay, target audience. I, um, maybe I want to garner volunteers, right? So um, volunteers who are interested in my cause. All right, so let's try and see what this will output. Give me a second. Um, all right, while it is waiting, I wanted to point out a couple of things on this console here. Um, so on the top of each box, you'll notice that you can edit these. So if I click on that, um, here is the prompt that it generated for me. So this is what it's doing. It is taking this prompt and taking these variables in that I just entered. Um, and then passing it through to create that um, email. And you'll see here, you can also change the different models. And so some models are good at, for example, generating marketing emails. Some models are good at social media posts, right? So you have a way to play with these. All right. There we go. All right. So here is a tailored email that I generated for me. Um, 
So target audience, and they gave me a subject line, hey, come join us, and dear compassion volunteer, and so on and so forth. And then gave me some parts where it says, hey, enter in your own information, okay? Um, and cool thing about this is look at the bottom here. It even generated a chat bot to say, hey, take some, what are your feedback? What do you think about what I generated? We can tailor this, right? And so all of this was created from my just one simple sentence and all of this was created. Um, and so I want you to take you back to, um, or actually, let me show you one more thing. So let's say, okay, I think this is good, but taking in business description and target audience is not enough. Maybe I want to also make sure that um, it knows what my role is, right? So I can add a widget and I can say, this is a widget that's going to be a user input and uh, writer role. So maybe if I'm an executive, I want to make sure that it is in the voice of an executive, right? So they know that um, it, it's a little more professional. Um, or maybe I am a social media campaign. And so my voice wants to be a little bit more uplift. So um, what I can do then is now I create this new widget. I can come back in this prompt here and do a simple add. So um, take into account and let me reference the new variable we just created. Okay, write a rule. So let's say that. And then let's say um, I am volunteer coordinator. So make the email more fun and upbeat. So let's see what it does. So let's regenerate that um, and see what changes it might add to that. Um, okay, so while it's doing that, actually, one more thing I want to point out is we come up to the top here. You'll see how now my app is private. What I can do is change that into a public app and I can share it. So if you have someone on your team who's also writing grants, who also needs to write marketing emails, who you think can benefit from this application, you can share with them and then they will have this um, kind of smart form generative AI assistant that they can use right away. So let me brush it real quick. All right, there we go. All right, so notice right away, you know, it, the language changed. It's got an exclamation mark. It says vibrant, right? Um, we are here to uplift and empower. I am thrilled to invite you. So now it's taking that additional variable into account. So that's just one quick example. Um, so coming up here to the left here, there's a couple other examples. So another one that I actually tried out was a grant writer assistant. So maybe you want to have organization title, your mission, what is the grant you're applying for, and the description of that grant so that the writing can be tailored towards what the grant is looking for. Um, your What is the idea of your project? You can tell it a little bit about that. And then are there any required sections? And then it'll generate a grant proposal for you. So these are just some ideas of how you can uh, utilize Party Rock. And with Party Rock, um, again, it's outside of AWS console. So even if you are not on AWS today, you can come to partyrock.aws and all you need is either a Gmail account, an Amazon account, or an Apple account. And you can log in through one of those three and start playing with Party Rock for free. So I hope um, you all will take some time and experiment with this uh, really cool tool. All right, so with that, um, we want to make sure you also walk away with some uh, resources besides just that Party Rock tool of how you can get started with AWS. Um, Carl, do you want to tell us a little bit about the resources that we have? Yeah, so how do you get started? And let me get, go back on camera here. All right, so you can go to the next slide, Angela. Now, hopefully you found this webinar interesting and the capabilities that you saw in Generative AI have piqued your interest and you want to explore them. So Angela and I would be more than happy to engage with you and try to facilitate a meeting with our AWS teams to do a discovery workshop. Um, we can also 
um, assist you in providing some hands-on experience and discuss how you can leverage these capabilities in your organization. We can identify and prioritize generative AI use cases and evaluate potential candidates for a proof of concept. AWS can also provide hands-on training through labs and tutorials, and we can provide AWS courses on deep learning. And finally, with a proof of concept, we can look to target a quick win use case to demonstrate machine learning impact and collaborate with your teams to plan and execute that. And we can then review the proof of concept results and assess a pathway to products for you to start leveraging generative AI as soon as possible. Yeah. And so, and next slide, thank you. The other thing that if you want to take a look on starting your generative AI journey today, I would recommend checking out our generative AI webpage. That's the most holistic location where you'll find our generative AI offerings. Take a look at our free skills training to take advantage of Amazon Q. You can also read about how three small businesses boosted their productivity using free generative AI tools. And also feel free to watch Werner Vogels, our AWS VP and CTO, explain generative AI at greater depth than what you learn even in this presentation. And so with that, we're passing it over to Mike. Is that correct, Angela? Yeah. Mike, do you want to take us home? Yeah, sure thing. Um, Carl, Angela, thank you so much. Uh, that was amazing information. Great demo. I learned a heck of a lot myself. So thank you so much for that. Um, and just for those that are, of you that are still on the call, so AWS offers multiple ways for your nonprofit uh, to be able to engage with us. Uh, we have programs that are specifically kind of focused around partners and marketplace. Um, if you scan that QR code down there, down there at the bottom, we have a free resource called Powering Purpose in the Cloud. Uh, provides a way for you to sort of like map out your cloud journey, kind of see where you are right now and how to get to where you want to be. Uh, we also, you know, would love to hear about your most ambitious IT projects through our annual Imagine Grant, something that uh, just closed round one. So certainly best of luck to all those applicants out there. Uh, and of course, you know, don't forget to visit TechSoup if you are new to AWS uh, and you can learn about how to get $1,000 in AWS credits directly through uh, TechSoup. Uh, if you could go one more slide, please. On the next slide, we're just going to invite you to connect with us. So if you have any questions about what you've seen here today or really about anything at all, uh, we'd love to connect with you. You can also email us at that email address there at the bottom as well. Uh, and with that, you know, I, I just once again like to say thank you to Angela and Carl for joining us today. Once again, I'm Mike Yoon. Uh, thank you for being here. And uh, we thank you for your interest in TechSoup and AWS. We'll see you all soon. Thanks. Bye, everybody.